let's see if we'll crush the computer here. So I am recording a new episode of This Week in the IndieWeb Audio Edition. Just finished my notes for the week. You can see them here. Hello, notes. Uh, takes a while to make that up. It took me about an hour, I guess, today. Uh, that video is also in my Twitch stream. Hi, I'm Marty, by the way. I don't usually stream. I don't know what inspired me to do it today, but here we are. So to make a new episode this week in the IndieWeb Audio Edition, I start by copying over last week's and I'm gonna take this apart essentially. So I've saved it to, uh, oops, uh, I've saved it to a new project. I'm gonna take out the final mix from last week. I'm gonna take out the mono mix of uh, my final recording. And this is my little intro. Hello and welcome to This Week in the IndieWeb Audio Edition for the week of May 19th through 25th, 2018. So that has to change every week, obviously. So I'm gonna select all of that by double clicking. I'm gonna turn off sync lock because I want to replace, I want to replace this with ideally a clip of the same length, but most importantly, I don't want it to bump anything around with the music it's syncing with. So I'm going to uh, flip over to a new Audacity project, and this is what I use to record. Hello and welcome to This Week in the IndieWeb Audio Edition for the week of May 26th through June 1st, 2018. Yeah, that's probably good enough. I try not to stress too much about how these sound. Uh, now, for everything I record, I do want to try to knock out noise. So I grab a noise sample from the beginning, and then I crash Audacity. Very cool. Let's go ahead and bring that back. Oh no, I just hit it. Uh, what did I do wrong? I want to apply chain. All oh, right, I had hit not all the right buttons. So. Command Shift H runs apply chain. I made a little chain here that is uh, runs noise reducer, compressor, and limiter to basically pull out noise, uh, make all of the peaks and valleys about the same height, and then get it as loud as possible without going over. So I'm going to apply to current project, and there, there it is. So that's now much louder. I'm going to delete the end of this clip so it's about the right length. Hello and welcome to This Week in the IndieWeb Audio Edition for the week of May 26th through June 1st, 2018. Hmm, that's good enough. So I'm going to take that back to this project and paste it in place. You can see it's a little longer than the previous one, uh, which means I'm going to have to adjust some things, most specifically these labels, which normally line up. Um, these always shift about a bit as those clips at the beginning change. It's cool, I've learned just to manage them. Uh, so that has changed. There's always the event section with a Homebrew Website Club intro. And then the actual piece about Homebrew Website Club is next, I'm gonna select that. Uh, now notice the this is no longer sync locked, so I'm going to turn sync lock back on. Uh, now with those clocks, that means when I replace this bit of audio, all of the other tracks will shrink or grow to fit. And since there's nothing else there, um, that's good. It means we don't have to fool around with all the other tracks. So let's actually record it. I'm gonna use my new project, clear out the last recording. And here's what we're recording next. So Humber Website Club, blah, blah, blah. My transcript has the text from the other pre-recorded bits that I've already uh, I've already got essentially, so I won't be re-recording those, but they stay in the audio file so they get exported again. <clears throat> Homebrew Website Club met on May 29th in Baltimore and on May 30th in Nuremberg, Brighton, and San Francisco, along with two virtual Homebrew Website Clubs. 
one at Central European time and one at U.S. Eastern time. Capo di Orlando in Sicily also held a pop-up homebrew website club. You can find photos and links to notes from the events in the newsletter. Join us again on June 13th for Homebrew Website Club, with meetings scheduled in Nuremberg and Baltimore. San Francisco will be foregoing their usual HWC in favor of meeting at the decentralized web meetup at the Internet Archive. Alright, so once that stopped, we're going to do the same noise removal routine. Select the front half of this under effect. And I can't really see all that, but that's okay. You can kind of see it. Well, effect noise reduction, get a noise profile, and then delete the noisy section and hit the noise compress limit shortcut. And there it goes. And now I'm going to come through and delete excess time. Any Eastern time. Capo di Orlando. That's fine. Any long silences. Night club. You can find photo newsletter. Join us again. That's a little long and it's got a gross mouth sound. It's in the newsletter. Join us again on. Oh, okay, good enough. Uh, I'm going to leave about a second of silence at the end of these. So here to here. That's it. So we're going to select all, copy, paste. You can hit left, jump back to the beginning of the clip, and tap through it to make sure it looks right. Uh, what's this? In Nuremberg and Baltimore. San Fr yeah, it was just longer than the clip it replaced. Cool. So then there's the rest of the info about Homebrew Website Club. And this should be about Indie Webcam. Registration is open for the 2018 Indie Web Summit, which will take place on Tuesday. Yeah, so that's Indie Web Summit stuff. Actually, going to record some more Indie Web Summit stuff to go with it. So let's go here. So that's this paragraph, and we're going to record these two. The schedule of keynotes for Tuesday is taking shape and includes talks by Manton Reese, creator of Micro.blog, Aaron Parecki and Jonathan LaCour discussing the next wave of indie readers, and William Hurtling, author of no oh. and William Hurtling, author of the novel Kill Process. Already planning to attend the summit? Spread the word. Send an open invitation to folks on your site and syndicate it out to social media. We would love to be joined by people of all abilities and backgrounds, and travel assistance is available. All right, so some goofs in there, that's okay. Do the same little noise reduction dance. The schedule, oops. Author of no oh. and William Hurt. There's the goof. Remove the goof. Indie readers and William Hurtling, author of the novel Kill Process. Already, already planning to attend the summit. Spread the word. Send an. All right, that looks fine. A second of sets. And I'm just going to stick that right here, about halfway between those pieces. There we go. All right. This is probably related events. In Indie Web related events. So we don't have any of those this week. I'm just going to delete it. All right. Some more labels that are. Out of whack. Little indie news header. And here's the indie news section that we're about to replace. 
All right, a lot of stuff to read. Aaron Parecki at AaronParecki.com published Dropping Twitter Support on IndieAuth.com. In it, he details the way that IndieAuth previously verified two-way links between a user's personal site and their Twitter profile. Due to recent changes by Twitter, this method is no longer functional. He gives a preview for replacement functionality on his beta site at IndieLogin.com, but points out that the feature is not yet generally available. Chris Aldrich at bafosako.com shared a link to a talk by Jeremy Keith at Webstock 18 titled Taking Back the Web. Recorded in February of this year, the talk discusses ways that the convenience of social silos like Facebook have allowed them to succeed despite the decentralized nature of the design of the web itself. He holds up the indie web as a way to bridge between the convenience of silos and the control of owning everything you publish online and introduces indie web building blocks such as RealmeAuth, Micropub, and WebMention, along with concepts such as posting on your own site and syndicating elsewhere, and backfeeding responses to your site. Matthias Pfefferle at notiz.blog published a German language post titled An Indie Web Podcast. In it, he gives a shout out to the podcast by that name, along with its hosts, Chris Aldrich and David Shansky, and links to their first six episodes. He adds that he himself would like to podcast again. All right. Same old dance, actually. Let's see if I pull this up. You can see my menus a little better. Arranging windows. What a fun stream activity. Okay. Now I think you'll be able to see, oh uh, yeah, so it's a little out of order, but noise reduction. I'm actually in the wrong project. Let me get, let me get this back to where it is. There we go. Noise reduction, get profile, and run our chain again. Ran the chain on the tiny noise part. Let's run the chain on the whole thing. Longer clips means more waiting. All right. Looking for long silences like this one. Bubble. Chris. So anytime I take a breath, I try to take it out. Um, but leave about a second between the end of a sentence and the start of the next one. Available. Chris Aldrich. Yeah, good enough. The web. Recorded in Feb. Publish online. And intro. Yeah, there is one. I try not to take a breath when I'm doing any given paragraph, but sometimes I goof. Publish online. And introduces indie web building. Yeah, that sounds a little bad. That's okay. Online. And introduces indie. Uh -huh. Another big breath. Let's call it there, probably. Your site. Matthias Pfeffer. A little too long. Okay, good enough. Replace the indie news, okay? So that's indie news done. Oops, some more labels to align. Get this lined up. Hmm, close enough. Move that a little bit. All right. New community members, a couple this week. <clears throat> mm 
Jay Funabashi joins us from j.funabashi.co.uk. Jay has been in the IndieWeb community for a couple of years, but is rebuilding his site on custom software called Inari, which he wants to be a life journal and archive. Taylor Jaden joins us from jaden.me. Taylor is a learning technology specialist at St. Norbert College. He uses his site to collect the work he does in the open, including podcasting and the occasional blog post. Oops. And my key combinations kind of muscle memory and my computer is running a little slow because I am streaming. Goose me up. Take out this big old silence. Archive. Make it pretty short because these aren't big. And archive. Taylor Jaden. It's not a big shift in topic because we were talking about new community members. So we'll just delete a little bit, leave a little silence. All right, there's those this auto split here. Audacity helpfully tries to show you where the last clip ended by splitting the clip, but I find those generally trip me up later. All right, first section of actual wiki updates is community and concepts. Keep smidging these labels around. Uh, nuke this. Um, pretty short this week, so that's easy. As more folks in the community leave silos like Facebook, they often look for ways to help friends and family stay in touch without having to build out their own indie web friendly sites. One method that's becoming popular is sending newsletters. You can check the newsletter page on indieweb.org for some examples from the community using the MailChimp RSS to email service to send daily or weekly emails drawing from a selection of post topics. Sometimes I make changes, and then I have to remember to make changes here. I noticed I did a couple earlier, too, which I have missed. So sorry, future transcript readers. It's a little wrong. Hopefully close enough that the meaning is not messed up for them. any big gaps in that, so we'll just call it done. Delete that. Paste that. Get rid of the separator. On to the next one. I like to scroll through and make sure the whole thing is selected because, like I said, those separators can pop up. All right. Clear out our check, and here we go. Chris Aldrich wrote this week about his work helping ColoradoBoulevard.net, a local newspaper for Pasadena, California, add support for sending and receiving web mentions, as well as backfeeding responses from Facebook and Twitter. This may be the first publishing organization to embrace web mention and backfeeding on their site. More writing about the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation has popped up around the web this week. Doc Searles published a piece on his prediction that GDPR will break tracking-based advertising models, leading to a return to ad models which no longer resemble direct marketing. Marcel Freinbickler noted on Twitter this week that the USA Today website was serving a version of their site without tracking scripts or advertisements to EU visitors. The result is a much faster site that loads about 10 times less data than the site as seen by visitors outside the EU. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, let's see, advertisement twice in one sentence. Too much advertisement. Delete 
Get that. Do that. Do that. Right. More writing about the great. Oh, big gap. Marketing. Marcel Freinbickler noted. Mm -hmm. Copy and paste. And let's see, that was actually much shorter than last week's, so I created a split in this track because it was on screen. Yep. This final one is Indie Web Developments, the last section before the closer. And it, it means the end is in sight. So let's close this out. Folks who develop in Perl may be interested in two releases from Jason McIntosh. Web Microformats 2 and Web Mention are two Perl libraries which allow the parsing of Microformats 2 data from HTML pages, as well as the sending and receiving of Web Mentions. McIntosh wrote these libraries as part of his work on Plurd, a static site generator written in Perl that is designed for single-user blogs. Sebastian Greger at sebastiangreger.net published Self-Hosting Maps, Taking Control Over UX and Users' Privacy. In it, he details several options for hosting map images, as well as interactive embedded maps, which do not rely on third-party services like Google or OpenStreetMap. Other new pages added to IndieWeb.org this week include FuturePub, MicroPub Proxy, Rubber Duck, Scheduled Token, Expiring Token, Recommendation Request, Federated Emoji, and Open Map Tiles. Follow the links in the newsletter to learn more about or add detail to these new terms. All right, and that's the last thing I have to record. So we do the dance, get the noise profile, delete the noise. Run the noise chain. Compress. Limit. And look for extra long silences. No, nope, that's fine. That's not good. Take that out. Your blogs. Sebastian Greg. Okay, good enough. Random noise. Um, let's do this. And this. Street map. Other new pages added to Indie Web. Pages saying page names. I sometimes feel a little weird about that section. Depends on if it's really long. This week was pretty long, so it feels a little goofy. All right. So that wraps that up. And it looks like all the content ends at 9 minutes, 10 seconds, which brings the episode total to 10 minutes and 2 seconds. So I'm still going to call it less than 10 minutes. All right, now we export this thing. So I'm going to take the talky-talky track with all of my speaking, and I'm going to, whoops, first I'm going to duplicate it so that I don't lose it because I use it every week. And I'm going to mute it. I'm going to take the copy, select it, and mix it into mono because I don't know if other people notice this, but this is a stereo microphone, and when I, since I try to talk directly into it, um, I notice little variations like when I move left and right. Um, I don't know if anybody else notices that, but it drives me a little crazy. So I mix it down to mono before I put the podcast out. Uh, then I'm going to select all the tracks and unselect my duplicated muted track and mix and render all to a new track. Uh, 
All right, and once we've got that, I'm going to select my final track, put it in solo just so everything else is quiet for the future if I do anything else with this. Uh, give it a save, and then I'm going to export as MP3. So now I gotta walk through this. Uh, nope, that's a different project. Save this to This Week in the Indie Lab. Here's this week's episode. And we edit the metadata. So this one's for May 26th through June 1st. And um, I always give the episode a track number of the date that it comes out, or realistically, the, I give it the date of the Saturday after the Friday newsletter. So the newsletter came out on the 1st, so this is track number 02, even if I put out the podcast a few days late. I try not to feel bad about that. All right, so that's exporting, and once it's done, I'll have an MP3, which I can post to my site. And that's going to be a different video because I have no streaming set up for that yet. Um, actually, I don't think that's true. I think I can do this. Uh, we'll let this go. Uh, whoops. Let's see. Studio mode. Yeah, this is still transferring. Uh, while it does, let's see if I can get this working. I need to turn off studio mode. Hmm. Where's my poor window? Hey, there it is. Excellent. So um, every week I do the same little thing here, posse. So I'm going to, I, I basically wrote a tiny app for myself that lets me make it easy to post here, although it's all still very manual. So here's the newsletter date. Um, oh, I have to write a blurb. This is always hard. Um, what were some big things I mentioned? Um, let's see. Oh, we can we can look back at the actual text here. So self-hosting maps is pretty good. The Perl stuff is pretty good. Uh, maybe this. Okay, I think indie newsletters. I talked about the Twitter support thing last week, so I won't use that again. Um, all right, I think it's going to be taking back the web. Newsletters replace Facebook. <laughs> and Let's call it something silly like Indie Web for Pearl. Actually, I think I like the self hosting maps. Privacy, privacy preserving maps. So let's try, let's try this switch here. Close enough. Um, you can see my little thing updating there. Um, oh gosh, what did I say? Taking back the web. That's the second thing. Uh, already forgotten it. Taking back the web. Podcast. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah. Um, 
um, placing Facebook with newsletters. That's always, it's always fun. We've got to get a little clickbaity with these. Uh, placing Facebook with newsletters, taking back the web in quotes because that's the title of a talk, and privacy preserving maps. It's the audio edition. Very cool. All right, I have no interviewer or interviewee this week. So we'll post this. I'm going to copy this big mess of markdown. Uh, good, I'm already logged into this. So there's my content tags for each of my podcasts podcast, indie web, this week, indie web podcast. This is a little micropub client that I wrote called Screech. It's pretty much just used for posting audio to my site over micropub. It's very slimmed down. And honestly, until recently, I haven't felt much of a reason to add features to it, but I'm getting some ideas recently. One of the big things I spent time on was making sure that it could pull metadata out of MP3s. So you saw when I exported from Audacity, I uh, put in like the title and all this extra stuff and Screech pulls that out and automatically makes a name. Um, probably spent a lot more time on that than I needed to, but I feel like it reduces errors when I put these out. So all of this looks good. I'm going to save it. It's going to start sending it to my site. One update I would like to make is there's no reason for this to wait. It could you start using my micropub media endpoint to upload the file before I finish this and that would be much faster. Gosh, I hope I didn't screw that up by just clicking that button. Well, we'll see. Uh, but it would be nice if the file went up to my micropub endpoint faster because uh, when it uploads to my micropub endpoint, my micropub endpoint then has to move it to a new server, which also takes time. And then once that upload has happened, I can't, I don't really have visibility into that. It's just spinning. Uh, then it'll show me the URL for that page. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Once I have that URL, I can start posting elsewhere. I can open those tabs for now. So I was supposed to Huff Duffer, which speaking of Jeremy Keith, that's his lovely audio collection site. And okay, this loaded. So my site is now busily compiling that. So it says page, page not found. Uh, but the, I have the URL, so I can paste it here. And now this becomes the stuff that I paste into HuffDuffer. So I'm going to take my title, go over to HuffDuffer, paste. Um, you'll notice that all of these are very similar. Just each site has slightly different inputs that it takes. These tags I use on HuffDuffer are from when someone else first shared the podcast there. Uh, and... Now I need to know the actual URL of the MP3, but I can't find that until it finishes building my site, which takes about a minute or two. I would check the chat and see how everyone's doing, but I, I didn't tell anybody I'm doing this stream, so uh, that's almost ready to go. I'm going to keep waiting. Uh, while I wait, I can open... Twitter and get Twitter ready to post, open Facebook and get Facebook ready to post. Just reloading, having a good time. Well, while I wait for that, actually, I don't have to do nothing. Uh, so if I come back here, I'm actually good now to quit this. So I'm going to save my project. I'm going to not save my scratch recording. Audacity is gone. And um, what I like to do here, I take I take this draft and it's got a lot of notes for me in here. Um, but every week I also post a transcript to my site. And that starts by just copying this thing and calling it transcript. So let's see, I need to make these line up because of the way I set up my stream. Um, but this process is fairly straightforward. I just delete the things that don't get read. One of my big hopes for the future is to not only automate some of this part, but actually make transcripts that are sort of useful. So for folks that may have trouble hearing uh, or want to link to specific parts of the newsletter, uh, they could actually link 
uh, like click on the transcript and get a direct link to that audio and that would be something they could share um, i've done little prototypes of the different pieces but automating this step especially when i've already spent a couple of hours putting the podcast together always feels like extra work that i don't want to do so i need some more hack sessions before i feel like that's ready all right so that's the transcript uh, which means I'm just I'm going to close this. Done with that. So now we just need to finish. Ah, good. Uh, this I copy. Oh, you can't really see that. If you right click here and copy the audio address, that gives me the URL of the MP3. And I can paste this in here finally into HuffDuffer. And that's all the data HuffDuffer needs. There we go, I've got that. Uh, so now I can also go ahead and post to Twitter. So I'm gonna select all of this, this pre-written tweet, copy it, make a tweet. Mm -hmm. Looks okay, tweet. And then the always fun thing of kicking Twitter to get it to reload. Thank you, one new tweet please. I'm gonna get the permalink for that because I will be, I need I need my post to syndicate out basically to, to have outgoing links that say, by the way, this post is also on these other services. So for Facebook, I'm gonna copy that text. Here's my Facebook page. Uh, let's paste this post in here. There we go, that looks fine. Yeah, good enough. So I'm gonna post it. And go to the permalink for that as well. And then um, let's go to Posse Party. This is another little tool that I wrote. I've used other tools for this in the past uh, that essentially let me um, edit stuff on my site without having to go into the back end and edit stuff on my site. I'm just going to log into this with Indie Auth. Do, do, do. Thinking. There we go. So now I can take this post that I have just made. I'm going to edit it and give it some syndication URLs. So it's on HuffDuffer. Close that. Copy the Twitter URL and close that and copy the Facebook URL and close that and update the post. And so that's going. And then the final step, add, adding the transcript is actually a manual step. And um, I don't have my streaming set up to follow me there. So uh, I could do that, uh, but I won't. Um, let's just say that's it. You can see an example of what a transcript will look like in the previous episode. So this was last week's. It's just a really awful text box for now. Um, but it's better than nothing, I think. At least nobody, nobody has told me it's worse than nothing. So that's it. I recorded and posted an episode. It took a little over half an hour with a, along with some digressions and chatting, um, which is good for me to know. I've never really timed out how long it takes me to do this. So that's it. I hope somebody, maybe future me, finds this interesting and or useful, and that is going to do it. I will see some of you, whoever you are, if anyone, later.